Can you guys confirm that you hear me well, please? Okay, thank you, guys. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, let's continue with chapter six. Section 6.2. Okay. Let me tell you the difference between uh, uh, section 6.2 and 6.1. In section 6.1, we did confidence intervals for the mean. And we had the following information. We had X bar. We had the sample size. We had the confidence level. And then we had sigma, which is the population standard deviation. And do you guys remember what uh, function on the calculator we used to create the interval? What do we call this function? Anyone remember the feature? That's what we did. Let me show you. Z interval, yes. That is correct. It, it was a Z interval and here it is. Uh, stat, tests, and watch guys. Z interval, okay. And look what it asks you. In order to use Z interval, you need to enter sigma, X bar, N, and the confidence level. And this is what I listed here. You will be given X bar and confidence level sigma. Let me tell you what 6.2 is about. You will see the difference. We need confidence intervals for the population mean. Same question. You will be given X bar, the sample uh, mean. You will be given N, the sample size. You will be given the confidence level. Then you will be given the sample standard deviation. Yes. Do you guys see the difference between the two? The first one, you are given the population standard deviation. The second one, you are given the sample standard deviation. If you are given the sample standard deviation, we cannot use the normal distribution Z that we use in section 6.1. So when S is giving which is called the sample standard deviation. There is a different, slightly different process to find the confidence interval than when sigma is given. When sigma was given, we use table four to find the critical values. And we use the Z interval if using the TI-84 or if using technology, we use Z interval to find the intervals. So, let me show you what's going to happen when S is giving instead of sigma. We're going to use a different distribution. It's called T distribution. I'm going to sketch it and show it to you. But before I sketch this one, let me sketch the normal distribution, the standard normal distribution. Here is the Z that you're used to, the bell-shaped curve. Okay, this is the Z distribution, normal distribution. We call it standard normal curve. Okay, let me show you the T distribution we're gonna be using in section uh, uh, 6.2.
Okay, this is T. What difference do you guys notice right away between the two uh, curves? Does anyone notice any difference I intentionally did here to show slight difference between the two? Can you tell me? There's a T instead of a Z. Okay, what else? Look carefully toward the ends of the curve. What did I intentionally make sure to look slightly different? What do you guys see? Think about it for a few seconds. Look at the curves. Look at the tails. Ah. In the first one, good, good no observation. In the first one, the tails of the curve are very, very close to the horizontal axis, the Z axis. Whereas in the T distribution, you can see there is some kind of thickness here. So the tails don't touch as close as the uh, Z distribution. I'm going to show you how the book, the sketch from the book, uh, just show you a little bit more about uh, the T distribution. There we go. Okay. What you see in blue, guys, is the standard normal curve that I sketched. See, the blue one is the standard normal curve. And look at the other ones. They are called the T distribution curves. It's a family. Actually, for the Z distribution, it doesn't change. It's always almost touching, but it doesn't touch. Whereas for the T curve or the T distribution curve, the curve can come close to the horizontal line or can go far away from the horizontal line depending on the sample size. As the sample size increases, the T curve comes very close to the standard normal curve. But as the sample size decreases, the thickness of the tails become, you know, more and more. So let me tell you what the DF stands for. DF, it's called degrees of freedom. It's the sample size minus one. So if you see a DF equals two, it means the sample size was three. If you see a DF equals five, it means the sample size was six because six minus one is five. As the DF gets larger and larger, then your T curve becomes closer and closer to the normal curve. That is what the T distribution. So let me uh, sh share some property of the T distribution. Mean, median, and mode are the same. The T distribution is bell-shaped and symmetric, just like the Z distribution. Total area under the curve is always 100%, so same property. The tails in the T distribution are thicker than those in the standard normal distribution. That's what uh, I said. And the T distribution is a family of curve, each determined by a parameter called the degrees of freedom. The degrees of freedom, it's abbreviated by DF. It's the number of free choices left after a sample statistic such as X bar is calculated. And it's denoted by N minus one. And as I said, as the degrees of freedom increase, the T distribution approaches the standard normal distribution. So when you have a large sample size, you cannot tell the difference, guys, between the T distribution and the Z distribution. You can either use, use either one. After 30 degrees of freedom, the T distribution is very close to the standard uh, normal distribution. So this is uh, the distribution that we're gonna be using to find confidence interval. Now the question is, probably you'll ask me, when do I use this? When he gives you the st sample standard deviation, he doesn't give you the population standard deviation, which I'm gonna demonstrate uh, that. For using technology, guys, the impact is gonna be so easy to figure out. We use Z interval when sigma is known, when sigma is not known and he gives us S, we use what we call T interval, not Z interval. So there is Z interval and T interval. As long as you can distinguish between the two guys, you should be able to solve all the problems in these two sections. 
But be honest with you, it has been a challenge for many students. You give them the problem and then they see the Z interval, the first thing they use it and then they find out later that they did the wrong thing. So it's very important to know which distribution to use in order to be able to use the proper uh, feature on the calculator. So let me do some examples and show you how we're gonna be using uh, uh, T distribution to find confidence intervals. Any questions? So that's, uh, that's the T distribution. Now, before I continue, let me show you, I'm gonna show you the table in a second. We'll show you the table after we go there and go to section 6.2. All right. Look at this table, guys. You might find using tables, it's easier than using calculator here. We find the critical values, just like in the Z interval, there are critical values when using the uh, T interval. I showed you how to use an inverse norm yesterday to find the critical values. But I'm gonna show you how easy it is to find the critical values uh, using this table, table five. It's called table 5T distribution. Let's say, guys, he gives you a sample size of 15 and he gives you a confidence level of 90% and you wanna find the critical value. Okay, if the sample size is 15, guys, can you tell me what's the degrees of freedom? Remember, degrees of freedom is the sample size minus one. So what would it be? Sample size is 15 will give us a degrees of freedom of what? 14. 14, exactly. So look what you do, guys, to find the critical value. Okay, this is 14. Watch. Very uh, easy. And just go to 90% right here, confidence level. So 90 to 14, it will be 1.761, as simple as that. Let's say he says the sample size is 10, then the degrees of freedom will be nine. And let's say he says 99% confidence interval. It will be right here, the 99. And then I go to nine toward the end. The critical value is 3.250. So this is how we use the table. You will have the choice not to use the table, always use the calculator to find the critical value. But I find it, usually easier even if you have the table handy to figure out the critical value than using the table. I will, this stuff will make sense to you once I start doing an example. So let me just do an example and show you how we're gonna put all of this together to construct an interval. All right. All uh, right, there is, Let's do this example, example one. You wish to estimate the average number of hours it starts in all large cities in the United States. You have a random sample of 25. So N guys is 25. That's N. And obtain the number of housing starts in each. The sample mean is 525. So X bar is 500. 25. Look what it says here, guys. Just pay attention to this. It says with a sample standard deviation of 40. So you cannot write this is sigma. This is S, not sigma. So S is 40. Now probably you'll tell me how, how do we know whether we have S or sigma. In the problem itself, it will say, it is known that the population standard deviation is such and such, and then you know it's sigma. But when he says a sample has a mean and a standard deviation, he is referring to the sample, so then it would be S. This is a deal breaker, guys, to decide whether it is uh, the, what you learned in section 6.1 to apply or what you learned in section 6.2. It's very important. Construct a 95% confidence interval. So confidence level, guys, is 95%. 
Okay. Let me show you how we're going to do this. I'm going to do it by hand first, and then we'll use uh, uh, technology. So yesterday, this is what we did yesterday. We said the mean is between X bar minus E and X bar plus E. I'm not going to change anything from what you learned yesterday. You will see. And we said we need to find E, and the formula for E was this. Okay. Since now we are in section 6.2, guys, I need to make some slight changes to this formula to make it work with section 6.2. Any suggestions? What do I change? It's just changing labels, guys. What do I change here? Okay. So sigma make it uh, S. Okay. Good. What else? There's one more change, guys. Z to T, excellent, very good, guys. And this is called the critical value, which we can use table five to find it. So look, let me write it again, just to make it look like uh, nice and clean. You see, guys, nothing changes. It's exact same formula, but different labels because we're doing T distribution instead of Z distribution. So now if I record the information again, so I have N is uh, 25, uh, S is 40, X bar is 525, and confidence level is 95%. Okay, watch. Let's find E first. It's TC. We haven't showed you yet how to find it. S is uh, 40. And N is 25, square root of 25. Now, for the critical value, guys, ZC is a critical value and TC is a critical value. To find this one, I'm going to do it manually using table 5. For table five, you need the degrees of freedom and you need the confidence level. Okay, the degrees of freedom, guys, here is 24. It's 25 minus one. And the confidence level is 95. So let me take it to the table again. And you guys tell me how to find. Can a student tell me uh, what would be the critical value? So look at confidence level of 95. And 24. Would and it be 2.064? No, 95 and 24. What did you say? Oh, 2.064. You're absolutely correct. Does everyone agree, guys? It's right here. Yeah, as simple as that. Well, I will show you how to use technology as well to find it if you don't want to carry that table around with you. So that will be. 2.064 times 40 divided by square root of 25, which is 5. So let's see. Let me do the math. And we're almost done, guys. That's it. That's the end of section 6.2. Once you learn how to do this, we just need to do some practice now. All right. Let me clear this. So 2.064 times 40 divided by 5. But I'm glad attendance is good today. Students heard me here. So 16.51. And guys, this is the confidence interval. 525 minus 16.51, 525 plus 16.51. Here will be mean between, you just uh, subtract 525.16, uh, 525 minus 16.51, it's 500.49. And then this one, guys, it will be 541. 51. This is your confidence interval. Now your statement, you say, with 95% confidence, we can say that the true mean is between 500.49 and 
541.51, and that is the confidence uh, interval. Any questions, guys, about what I did? And what's important to me that to understand why I use T instead of Z. The reason, guys, again, I use T instead of Z, it's because he gave me S. He did not give me sigma. If he gives me sigma, you have to refer back to the previous section and use Z interval instead of T distribution. Can you go over the TC part again? Yes. So F and C. No problem. The TC part, how do you find it? This is the S, this is the N. It's always uh, given crystal clear. The only thing that you need to do some work to find T is you uh, using table five, but in order to use table five, you need two pieces of information. The sample size, and you have to subtract one from it. He gave me a sample size of 25, so I subtract one, it's 24, and you need the confidence level. And if you look at the table, guys, to find that TC, and look, the title, even if you get confused, look what it says here, T distribution. So it's 40. You look, you look up from the first row at the confidence level, which is 95, and then make sure you not just you uh, label that. And then you need a 24, and look, 24 right here. You draw a horizontal line from here, you draw a vertical line from 95, and where the two lines meet, that will be your critical value. You use this critical value to uh, construct the interval. But we will be showing you actually how to find this critical value using technology, if you are asked to do it. But if you're constructing an interval, actually you don't need to show the critical value if you're not showing the work and using technology only, which I'm, it's gonna come into play right now. So I'm gonna show you now how I could have done this problem using technology. Watch, guys. There you go. That's your calculator. Second and clear. Let's clear this. I'm going to go to stat, tests, and watch. We see what's going to pop up after Z interval. T interval. Okay. Enter. Again, the input is a summary. He gave me a summary. He didn't give me actual data. Okay. X bar, 525, was it? Yeah. S, did you notice, guys, the difference between Z interval and T interval? In Z interval, it starts with sigma. Here, it's S. So always ask yourself, do I have S or sigma? And I keep talking about it because this is really the deal breaker in order to get this right or wrong. If you write sigma where S is given, you're gonna go to Z interval and get the problem done wrong. So you're using different distribution. 40. And N guys is 25. Confidence level, you can put 0 0.95 or 95, it's gonna do it. Calculate and watch. It gives you an interval, 508.49, 541.51. Let's see if they have a match here. Oh, eight here, I put uh, 500, sorry. Five four eight point four nine. Here you go. Exact match, guys. And you still have to interpret the interval and say, with ninety five percent confidence, we can say that the true mean is because you have to interpret for a reader, and tell the reader that you're not hundred percent confident. You are only ninety five percent confident. It means that there is a ninety five percent chance that the true population mean is within the boundary of the interval only ninety five percent chance okay any questions so putting in the calculator doesn't is it just clarifying your answer what is it when i put no you can either uh, if i don't impose on you any method you can just do the whole thing on the calculator because you put the numbers in that we got at the bottom Oh, no, I didn't. No, I did. Uh, I put those numbers. One, oh, two, okay. three, four. Yeah, that's what so I did. Numbers? Okay. Oh, no, I fixed this one, actually. 
Okay. I fixed. I put 500 by mistake. I fixed it. You know what I mean? Yes. Okay. So let's uh, let's do some more problems, guys, and show you. If you have your calculator handy, please uh, have it ready, and let's do some more uh, exercises in here. So let me just go back to my handout. Okay, we covered this exercise. I got the solution there on the handout as well. You see guys what I did, the 2.064, everything. So let's do the next one together. We're gonna do it both by hand and by using technology. But as I told you guys, if technology is accessible, you can use it, I will not impose on you one method over the other. I said that and I'll keep the word for this. So you'll get always full credit if you provide me with a solution, correct solution. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the population mean. Assume that the population has a normal distribution. A sample of 20 part-time workers. So what does the 20 stand for, guys? N. N. That's very important to distinguish what each one is. Has a mean annual earning of 3,120. What is this? X, bar. X, X bar. bar, yes, definitely. Mean means X bar with a standard deviation of 677, that is S. Now, maybe you can tell me why it's not sigma. I'll tell you, it's a plain English. He says, a sample of 20 has a mean and a standard deviation. When, what, is, what is he referring to when he says has a standard deviation? He's referring to the sample. If it was a population, guys, he would say the population standard deviation is known to be, etc. But this is S. That's very, very important, guys, that you be aware with, uh, of that. Okay, and construct a 95% confidence. It's right here. So we know it's a T distribution. Okay, here's another question for you guys. Why did he assure us that the population is bell-shaped? He had to, otherwise I would not proceed. I would not be able to solve this problem. Do you guys know in, the, in some problems he doesn't say it and other problems he has to say it. Why did he say that the population is bell-shaped here? Remember the central limit theorem says, if the sample size is theory or more, it doesn't matter whether the population is bell-shaped or not, because we're gonna get you know, a distribution of the sample mean that is bell-shaped. But if the sample size is less than 30, it is a requirement that the original population be bell-shaped. So anytime you have a sample size of less than 30, he has to mention this. If he doesn't, you will not be able to proceed with the problem. Okay, list the given value. We already list them. Find the critical value, TC. Okay, I'm gonna display this. I'm gonna use it with the table and then in a little bit, I'll show you how to do this separately using the calculator. So remember guys, we need two things, degrees of freedom, which is gonna be 19, if you agree with me, 20 minus one. And we need the confidence level, which is 95. Okay, I'll project it and then you guys can tell me uh, what it is. So you need 19 and 95. What would that be? 2.093. Everybody agrees, guys, 2.093. I couldn't agree more. Yes, that's 19. Watch, guys. And that's a 95. I told you it's very easy table to use. 2.093. Yes, done with the table. And actually this is the most important part is to find this value. So uh, you will have E now, which is 2.093 times S guys, which is $677. Uh, since it's on dollars, we know we have to round to two decimal places, divide by square root of 20. Okay, let's do this.
I'll put the calculator here. 2.093 times 677 equal, and then divide by, look, if you wanna do square root of 20 shortcut, guys, watch how I do it. I just put 20 here and look, I go to the hat and put 0 0.5. And then this will take you back. That's a square root of 20. So I got 316.84. And now your interval, you see the steps, X bar minus E, my X bar is 3120 minus 316.84 and 1120 plus 316.84. And I'm almost done. I'll just do the math. And I get it, 3120 minus 316.84. It is 2803.16. And then the next one, guys, 3120 plus 316.84. It's 3436. 184. Finally, interpret your answer in words. You're going to see many problems in the homework. He asks you to choose the statement at the very end that is correct. So with 95% confidence, we can state that the true mean annual earnings is between, just put the values, 2,803.16 and 3,436.84. And now we can use the calculator to do this, guys. Let me show you how I could have used a calculator. Even if you do the work by hand, guys, use technology to verify your answer. So watch, stat, tests, T interval. Remember, this is a section for T interval. Stats, probably you're wondering when we use data. We will, I'm gonna show you how to use data in a little bit. Okay, what is the mean here, 3,000? 120, am I right? Uh, yeah. Then S, 677. Then N is 20. And the confidence level, this is very common confidence level between 90 and 99, they use 95 a lot. It has to be a match, otherwise. 2803.2. Two and three four three six point eight. That is the interval uh, that you have. Let me just check something in mode here. Okay, it is float, so that's the interval. Okay, any questions, guys? Okay, let's do another one. Okay, that probably I hope that you uh, find uh, interesting here. Uh, to help consumers assess the risk they are taking, the Food and Drug Administration, FDA, published the amount of nicotine found in all commercial brands of cigarettes. A new cigarette has recently been marketed. That, uh, the FDA tests on the cigarette gave a mean nicotine of content of 26.1. So X bar is 26.1, and let me put it here. So that's X bar. With a standard deviation of 2.9, he didn't mention a population standard deviation that must be S. 
from a sample of n equals nine cigarettes, guys. So you agree with me that n equals nine? Okay. And the, the FDA claims that the mean nicotine content of this type of cigarettes exceeds 28.9 for this brand of cigarettes. So probably exceeds, you know, the uh, uh, maximum uh, allowable amount of uh, nicotine. And that's bad for the company, bad news for the company. But the question is, and their stated of reliability is 90%. So they use a 90% confidence level. Do you guys agree with the FDA? In order to agree with the FDA or not agree with them, you have to construct a confidence interval and then we will decide whether we agree or not. So I'm gonna do again this question guys, both by hands and by using the calculator. In order to use to do it by hand, you need TC, the critical value. And for TC, I need two values, degrees of freedom, which is nine minus one here, guys, which is eight, and the confidence level, which is 90%. So let me project the table one more time, and you guys can tell me what TC is. Here you go. So 90% and eight. What would that be, guys? 1.833. Or no, 1.860. <laughs> I like it. I like the 1.860 better. Okay, we'll use that one. Uh, 1.860. Very good. Yeah, I know it's on the screen. It's not very clear. So E guys is T C S over square root of N. 1.86 times S 2.9. Not everything that comes from the FDA is correct, guys. So probably they're wrong here. We'll see. That will help the cigarettes company uh, over N, which is nine. Okay. And if I do the math, 1.86. 1.86, I'm doing the math on the calculator now, times 2.9 and then divide them by square root of nine, which is three. So I got guys 1.798. And let me turn the page over and see what's on the next page. There you go, I put, I put room for you guys to finish this so you can write notes that's why i call it guided notebook and mean watch x bar was 26.1 minus 1.8 1. Uh, i'll just make it 1.8 and 26.1 plus 1.8 so your mean guys will be 26.1 minus 1.8 it would be 24.3 and 26.1 plus 1.8 will be 27.9. That's the interval. Now the question is, you haven't answered the question. The FDA says that this type of uh, cigarette exceeds, the amount of nicotine exceeds 28.9 milligram. That means exceeds their limit. Do you agree with the FDA? No. You don't agree. And you're in trouble if you don't agree with the FDA. Let's see. We don't agree with the FDA. Do you guys know why? The person who said no, can you tell me why? Because our interval is less than what they said. Exactly. 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 Because we don't agree. You see how important confidence intervals, guys? We don't agree with the FDA. Because all the possible values of the mean in the interval 
we don't know which one is the true mean, but we know for sure they're all less than 28.9. Uh, so all the possible values of the mean in the interval are less than 27.9. And they're telling us it exceeds 28.9, no. So they probably have to do require another study or probably uh, improve their sample size because the sample size is so small, guys. How could we have done this on the calculator? Let me show you very quick. So you go to stat, calc, uh, sorry, tests, and it's number eight, guys. That's the highlight of today's section. It's number eight. T interval, we're coming to data in the next question. So X bar is 26.1. I'm gonna see how fast the calculator process this. 2.9 for S, N is nine. Don't put eight here, it says N, not degrees of freedom. Sometimes students make a mistake and put N minus one. No, it says N as you can see. And the confidence level, we need to change it this time to 90. And here you go guys, you're gonna get the same interval, 24.3 and 27.8, uh, 0.9. All right, so any questions here? Great. All right, next one, guys. Well, uh, before I go to the next one, let me show you how to find those TC values without using table five. So finding those values using the calculator. I'll, uh, I'll do this before we proceed to the next uh, questions for which we'll be using the uh, calculator. Okay, so have your calculator handy, guys, and I'm going to show you how to find TC using calculator. Okay, watch. Let's say he gives me N to be 17 and confidence level to be 90%. And here's how you find uh, TC. Uh, just like we did yesterday for the Z interval. Do you guys still remember what we did? We took 100% minus 90%, which is what, 10%. And what did we do with the 10%? Do you guys, can, remi can you remind me what we did with 10%? Divided by two, I agree. Then change it to a decimal. Okay. Then we're gonna go to a formula called inverse T, guys. It needs two arguments from you. It needs area to the left, and then it needs degrees of freedom. Now, let me tell you what I mean by an area to the left. Here is your interval. Let's say you're doing 90%. This is T. Well, you know, there is a 5% here, and there is a 5% there. And the calculator just needs one area to the left to be able to find the critical value. There are two critical value. One is negative and one is positive, as you can see. So we're gonna do area to the left. I can do this, which is 0 0.05. Or if you wanna get a positive answer, guys, you can do the area to the left of this. If 5% is the area to the right, then 95% is the area to the left. You will get the same answer. And you need the degrees of freedom. If n is 17, degrees of freedom is 16. How do you find the inverse t? Watch. You see, it's more work than using table five, as you can see. So you go to stat. Uh, sorry, not stat. Second, variables for distribution. Okay. We use normal CDF in chapter five. 
we used inverse norm in chapter five and we used it in six yesterday to find ZC and now inverse T. Okay, you enter 0 0.05 comma and the degrees of freedom I said it's 16 here and enter. Negative 1.746. When you use, use it in E, you just put 1.746. So this is negative 1.746. And guys, the other one is always 1.746. You could have used the table to find this one. And I'm going to show you that uh, I will show you that there is a match between the two. Let me get the table and show you that we would have gotten the same answer. So if you put inverse T, uh, 0 0.95, that will give us the positive value, uh, the positive critical value, and make sure to put the degrees of freedom of 16. It's just going to give you 1.746. All right. Next question. Please uh, work with me on the next question, guys. We need to do and put some data in there. And Can we divide by two for the ten percent? Uh, yes, always. So here is how it works, you know, verbally. For ZC or TC, if he gives you ninety percent confidence or ninety-five percent confidence, look what you do. 100% minus 95%, you get 5%. Divided by two, you get 2.5%. Change it to a decimal, 0 0.025, plug it in into the function, whether it is an inverse T or, or uh, inverse norm. And then for inverse norm, you have to put 0, 1. For inverse T, you have to put the degrees of freedom. So inverse norm is used in section 6.1 whereas inverse T is used in section 6.2. Uh, next question, we're gonna do this one, guys. Before we do any work, I would like you to input the data into L1. So let's do this. So we have the data in L1 and let's read the question. The grade point average of 10 randomly selected junior college students are listed below. Assume that the grade point averages are normally distributed. He had to say that because he only gave me a sample size of 10, less than 30 guys. Find a 98% confidence interval for the true mean. Round to the nearest hundredth. Okay. Well, with this one, guys, I wouldn't even bother do any work by hand. Just go to the calculator. So stat, tests, number eight, T interval. Okay. You see what I'm going to do now, guys? I have to shift from stats to data because he gave me the data set. Watch. Enter. Press enter. Now it's asking you to confirm where is your data. You could have put that in L2, no problem, but make sure to put L2 there. So I put it in L1, as you noticed. Frequency, guys, don't ever change this number. Take a note for yourself that's fixed at one, always. Confidence level, he says 98. And calculate. Look how simple it is, you're done. All right, so we want to round to two decimal places. So it will be 1.55 and 3.53. Okay, interpret the interval in words with 98% confidence. We can say, or you can say that, the true uh, it's about the grade point average. The grade point average is for 
junior college students. is between 1.55 and 3.53. Do you guys agree with me that this is a very wide interval? And if yes, why? Why do I say this is a wide interval? Although it only goes from 1.5 to 3.5. Do you guys know why this is very uh, wide? It's very difficult to interpret this interval. Uh, the reason, the reason why, guys, because if if we're saying that the true point average is between 1.55 to 3.53, are we saying that everybody is passing? On average, no, because the mean could be 1.7. 1.7 is below two, guys. That means it's a D D grade, and it could be the mean 2.5. That's a C, or it could be a 3.1. That's a B. Or it could be a 3.5, considered a B plus, you know, just in some colleges. So this is a very wide uh, interval. And the reason why this interval is wide, because the sample size is small. If we have a larger sample size, guys, this interval will shrink. Try to do the same problem and add 10 more entries to it, and you're going to see that your interval is going to shrink. So the more data, the more sample, uh, the more in the sample, uh, the narrower, the smaller your interval is, which is good. Because if your interval, guys, was, let's say this. If I tell you on average, my students' uh, average on this next test is going to be between 3.1 and 3.33, uh, the mean uh, average. Does this give you a very good idea what uh, how everybody is going to do? Yes, indeed. It, it, this is saying that everybody, on average, everybody is going to get a B because 3.1 to 3.3, it's very much of a B. But whereas with 1.55 to 3.53, you cannot tell, guys. So this is uh, section 6.2. It is a lot more important than section 6.1. You're going to see more exercises on the test from section 6.2, then 6.1. Why? Because in real life, we don't know the population standard deviation sigma. We always know information about the sample, not the population. And this is why it's more popular uh, and more common to use T interval than using Z interval. But there will be a question on Z interval, but the T interval is a dominant, you know, just a player here because it's the common case. Okay, the last one, we learned how to estimate the mean, guys, in section 6.1 and 6.2. Now we're going to learn how to estimate and find a confidence, confidence interval for the percent, for the proportion P. Okay, and uh, I'm, I'm just going to keep going and show you how to do this by hand and by using the calculator, and that should be it for this section. So section 6.3. All right, let's talk about this. No confusion in this section. It's only proportion. It's not like, you know, do we have S or do we have Sigma? There is no S and there is no Sigma here. You are going to see that in a second. Okay, requirements for uh, to do to estimate. When I say estimate, guys, the population proportion means find a confidence interval. In some books, your chapter six, it's called Confidence Interval. Uh, it has a different title. It's called Estimating the Mean and the Proportion. So it is the same thing. Okay, the requirements to do this test, uh, to, to find the interval. We have to have a simple random sample. N has to be large enough. So N times P greater than five and N times Q greater than five. I'll explain that in a second. And then we have a margin of error, and then we can find you know, the confidence interval using the margin of error. Um, let me explain what it says right here. And once I explain it, guys, you just do the, uh, the application. Okay, section 6.3. 
confidence interval for the proportion. It's not the mean anymore, guys. It's a proportion. And if you recall, and yesterday we called the proportion a P. Okay. Let me mimic the experience that we did in the previous two sections. We did this. Okay. Instead of the mean in section 6.3, it's going to be P. We're not working with mean, we're working with proportion. This is called the population proportion. We're gonna try to estimate it. Instead of X bar guys, we're gonna do a sample proportion. So this is a sample mean. In section 6.3, it's gonna be a sample proportion. So we're gonna call it P hat. So your interval in section 6.3, it's gonna be like this, guys. P hat minus E and P hat plus E. So it's enough for me to show you how to find E. P hat will be given to you always. E, I'm gonna show you how to calculate E using a formula. And once we do that, we can write the interval. Now, the good news is, guys, that you can do this on the calculator as well. So we'll do it both ways. I'm just going to do probably one uh, by hand and then uh, show you how to use the uh, calculator for this one. Okay, so let's get ready uh, for this part. Let's do an example here and show you how this is going to work out. Example one, watch guys. A survey of 500 non-fatal accidents. The 500 guys is N. It's gonna be different. There is no standard deviation. There is no sample mean. There's just two values. How many in the sample and how many successes do we have? Show that 140 involved uninsured drivers. This is called X. X is the number of successes. And you know the probability by definition is the favorable outcomes divided the possible outcomes. So your P hat, the sample proportion or the sample percent or the sample probability, it's gonna be X divided by N always. So that will be 142 divided by 500. And if you do the math guys, you get 0 0.284. This is the P hat that I'm talking about. From the sample, what is the proportion? What's the percent of accidents that involved uninsured drivers? It's 142 out of 500. Out of means division, so you just divide. Construct a 99% confidence interval for a proportion of fatal accident that involved uninsured drivers. Did you notice, guys, you were not given anything other than X and N, that's it. There is no mean, no standard deviation here. We don't need any of this. We just need X and N and the confidence level 99%. Okay. So state the value of the sample size N is 500. The number of success is X, which is 142. And the confidence level, guys, is 99%. If you just follow my guidance, guys, here, you should be able to just proceed just a step by step. So let's go to the next part. One second, please. Okay. Verify that the requirements are met. Okay. If he asks you to verify that the requirements are met, you do that. If not, you can just proceed. And here are the requirements. We need to verify that n times p hat is greater than 5 and n times q hat is greater than 5. Now p hat, guys, you did it, which is 0 0.284. Does anyone know what q hat is? q hat is a probability of failure. How do I find the q hat? Uh, 
Any suggestions? Let's see what people say here. One minus, exactly. It is one minus. And just one uh, correction here on this handout, guys. Probably because I couldn't type this in here, put it in there. That should be P hat and Q hat right here. P hat, Q hat. Anyway, once I'm done with this, I'm going to scan it and uh, put it under uh, resources by your instructor. So Q hat, guys, is 1 minus 0 0.284, which is 0 0.716. So need to verify. N is 500 times 0 0.284. Does it give me a number bigger than 5? Yes. If you multiply, you're going to get bigger than 5. And 500, guys, times 0 0.716, is it bigger than 5? Yes, so the requirements are met. Actually, guys, when I ask you to find the interval, that means the requirements are met already. Okay, find the critical value Z using table 4. So it's a Z distribution in section 6.3. Let's see if we still remember how to find Z using the inverse norm. So we have... Uh, what did he want? A 90%? 99% confidence. 99% confidence. So what did I do here? 100% minus 99%, which is 1%. Divide the 1% by 2. It will be 0 0.005. So to find ZC, guys, you do inverse norm. 0 0.005 comma 0 comma 1 and I still remember the answer is negative 2.576 you can memorize this one for 99% confidence level it's two, it says 2.575 you can use this either okay E is ZC this is the formula for E guys and I always provide this formula if I ask you to compute the margin of error so you get 2.576 times square root, that's the formula, p hat, which is 0 0.284, q hat, which is 0, you did it already, 716, divided by 500. And that's the formula. Let me show you how to do that on the calculator. And then we will use the TI-84 feature to do this. Just one second, bear with me for one minute. Uh, 2.5, okay, let me clear. So how do I do this in one shot? Let's do it in one shot. You can do square root of 0 0.284 times Zero point seven one six divide by five hundred, and let's get the answer here. And then times two point five seven six. There you go. That's the margin of error. Zero point zero five two. Let's see if we have any questions here. Uh, what do you mean? Uh, oh, oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. You could, for the fraction, what do you mean alpha y? Let me see here. If we go to alpha and then y, let me see what you're talking about. You just do this the division sign. I'm not sure if there is another way, but just use the division sign. Yeah. So what did we get? 0 0.052. If I round to three decimal places, guys. And now here, this is a mistake from my side. That should be a P. So P will be P hat, guys. You already did it at the very beginning, minus the 0 0.052. And you're gonna love how this is done on the calculator. It's much faster than all of this. And just let's do that and we're done.
So for the first part, I got 0 0.232. And for the second part, guys, 0 0.284 plus 0 0.052. Uh, 0 0.336. Okay. Interpret your answer in words with 99% confidence. We can say, or you can say, that the true proportion, true means population, guys, proportion of fatal accidents involving uninsured vehicles is between it's you it's good for a reader guys to do it as a percent so they understand it better is between 23.2 percent and 33.6 percent that is the conclusion of the problem. Now probably the part that you're waiting for, how do we use the calculator? It's very straightforward, easy. You watch stat. It's a proportion, guys. Go to test. It's not number seven, it's not number eight. Let me show you where, what it is. It's A, one proportion Z interval. Enter. You see what it requires? Only X and N and the confidence level. And what was X in our uh, exercise? 142. Always X is smaller than N. Sometimes the students confuse the two and the calculator will halt. If you put, if you swap X and N, you're going to get an error message. 500. And then 99. Hit calculate. And here you go, 0.232 uh, and then 0.336. That's exactly what I got. So I'll put here, use one prop Z interval. Enter the value of X, then N, then the confidence level. And you should be able to do it. Any questions, guys, about this? How did you get there again on the calculator? Yes, you go to stat. Let me do it one more time. I went to tests. It's always from chapter six onward, guys. All the features are under tests. Uh, and then I scroll down to the letter A, which is one prop Z interval. On the last page of the handout that you guys have, I put the directions step by step in how to use the one prop Z interval. So I just press enter. You enter the value of X, you enter the value of N, the confidence level, and uh, you hit calculate, and that should give you the interval. Let's see how much time we still have. Okay, 10 more minutes. Let me just do this. I'll do the next example. Uh, a researcher at a major clinic wishes to estimate the proportion of the adult population of the United States that has sleep deprivation. How large a sample is needed in order to be 99% confident that the sample proportion will not differ from the true proportion by no more than 5%. Okay, so now it's about the sample size. Let me show you the formula that we use, guys, to find E. This is the formula. Okay. If you try to do some algebra, guys, to tweak this formula and solve for N, you're going to get this. So I'm not going to waste your time with this. Just we're going to use it. It turns out to be that. So that's the formula for N. When I put Z0, it's the same thing for ZC, critical value. Okay, so here he's, he wants a sample size, N. He wants this. But in order to find N, we need to know those. What did he give us? He says 99% confident. Well, if he gives us the confidence level, guys, we know ZC. 
And I think you should try to memorize the C for uh, 99%. It's 2.575. All right. And he gives us E, guys. He says, what sample is needed in order to be 99% confident that the sample proportion will not differ from the true proportion by the home, no more than 5%. That's the margin of error, E. So that's giving. That is giving. So what is missing, guys, here? What is it that he didn't provide us with? Can you tell what's still missing here? Let's see what the student says here. Okay, the P hat and the Q hat. The sample proportion and uh, the probability of failure. Well, they're not given to us, guys. So what do you think we should do? We need to make a compromise. Guess what I'm going to use for P hat and Q hat since they're not given to us. You need to go somewhere in the middle, guys. Any suggestion for values if they're not given to us? What would you use? Let's read somewhere in the middle. Always, when you argue and the other side argue, you have to find you know, a common ground and usually it's in the middle. So what do you suggest for those values? Exactly 0 0.5. So if P hat and Q hat are not given, the book suggested that you use 0 0.5. So it's gonna be 0 0.5, times 0 0.5 times 2.575 squared divided by 0 0.05 squared. And let me do this. I'm gonna do it on the side, the calculator work. There is no calculator formula for N, guys. You have to do this by hand. That's the only thing that you have to do by hand. I'm just going to write the answer that I got from the calculator. I got this. So what should be the sample size, guys? Sample size must be always rounded up. So sample size must be 664 or more. You always have to round up. Now we use a different formula for n than the one that we use for the mean because this is about the proportion, guys, so you use a different formula. For the mean, there is a formula that I used yesterday. And there is another uh, uh, exercise and uh, just about the sample size and that should uh, take care of it. A state highway patrol official wishes to estimate the number of legally intoxicated drivers on the certain road. How large a sample is needed in order to be 95% confident that the sample proportion will not differ from the true proportion by no more than 2%. So E is 2%, guys. Does anyone remember what ZC for 95 is? They were at the bottom of table four. If you uh, remember, I showed you yesterday the bottom of table four. Yes. Very good. And you can do it, guys. Or inverse norm. You have to take 100% minus 95%, which is 5%, divided by 2, 2.5%, so it will be 0 0.02501. It's going to give you guys negative 1.96. You use negative positive, it doesn't matter, but we always use positive. Okay. So... How large state the value of the margin of error and the confidence level I already did. Use the formula I'm giving you. So we don't know P hat and Q hat, so we'll just use 0 0.5, 0 0.5 times 1.96 squared over 0 0.02 squared. Okay, let's do this. I promise, guys, I'll let you go after this part to do the second part and we'll be done. And tomorrow we will uh, review uh, the entire chapter six. Okay, I got 2,401. 
it's a whole number, so I just leave it. That's the answer. Okay, last part. Repeat part A, same question. Find the sample size needed to be in order to be 95% confident and where the sample proportion will not differ from the uh, true proportion by no more than 2%. Assuming from previous studies that found that 75% of the drivers on this road are legally intoxicated. So, and this is the formula, guys. Who can help me here? Okay, ZC is not gonna change, 1.96 squared. E is not gonna change, 0 0.03 squared. Can you guys guess what's gonna go here? He's given us information about the sample proportion from previous experience, previous studies. So now we know what the sample proportion is. It's not 50-50, he says it's 75%. So if one is 75%, guys, can you tell me what the probability of failure would be? That's the last thing I ask of you today. 0.25, yes. 100% minus 75%. All right, you're gonna get a smaller sample size. It's always good to have prior knowledge of what happened before. You will get a smaller sample size. Times one point, I'm doing the math guys on my calculator then divide by 0 0.02 squared. You can do it at the same time. And I got 1,800.75. It should be 1,801. You see, big difference. So you need more and less in the sample. It will cost you less, less time if you have some prior knowledge about the event. Okay, that's it, uh, guys. Uh